Saturday, January 11th here at the West End Gun Club. It's just after six o'clock in the morning. I'm the only one out here, surprisingly enough. I figured there'd be at least a couple of the hardcore shooters here uh, shooting on the main line with some lights or flashlights or whatever to light up the range, but no one's there. Um, but I think this range should be filling up pretty soon. I think there's a pistol match going on today and it's Saturday and I figure people will want to shoot on the weekend. But just out here, shoot more 22 obviously at the Rimfire range and uh, two weeks uh, until our next NRL 22 match here at the club. It'll be January 26th, if I got my dates right in my head. And uh, registration should be opening up tomorrow, I believe. I set it up two weeks prior to the match. So registrations will open up on practice score. And I'll go ahead and post the link to the registration link in the description for this vlog video. Um, but I wanted to come out really early today just to do a little shooting. Brought a couple, well, one specifically new target, and then um, I got some new targets from JC Steel, which I may or may not shoot. I just brought them out here because I just repainted them. I figured I'll just bring them to the range, and if anything, I'll just show them off in the vlog video. And then um, I brought this old PVC target stand I built for another range facility a while back that I went to because they don't allow steel target stands. I don't know. <laughs> I don't get that. I understand not allowing steel targets on your range because you're afraid of some kind of fire, but no steel target stands, so I had to make this deal, and it's just been sitting in my garage after one time use as a PVC PVC stand I just built. So anyway, it's, uh, it's upside down, but I'm gonna keep this in the Connex container here because I might actually just use this one for the NRL 22 matches that we hold here, so I'll just use this for the target stand. Um, anyway, gonna go ahead and just unload the gear. By the time I'm done, sun should be up and start shooting. If anyone is at all interested in the PVC target stand that I showed off or mentioned earlier in the in the uh, vlog intro but this is pretty much it it's the width of an IPSEC or IDPA target as far as the stands so if you're gonna create a wood stand or whatever just make it the width of the IPSEC target um, and if you're just gonna use IPSEC targets just gotta staple the the wood on each side of the, the cardboard but anyway it's that width and then the length of the thing is it's about I would say 44, uh, 46 inches, roughly. I don't know. You can make it around four feet. And the reason why I made it this long is just to give it some stability without adding weights to the inside of the pipe. It's two inch PVC and it's actually quite stable. So if it were gonna blow, it ain't gonna, it, the, the base is so, so long that it won't tip back or forth when the wind catches and it blows it either back for backwards or forwards this stand isn't gonna rock. It's no way, this is, it's probably not gonna flip. And if it does flip, that's some really strong winds. And I, most likely, if anything, if the wind were to blow really hard, this would probably just come out of the, uh, it would just flip out of the, out of the, uh, the uprights or whatever. But I don't know, a simple enough design, but it's kind of bulky to carry around. Like I said, it's, if you look at the tape measure here, it's a, uh, just about, just around 45, 46 inches. Although I didn't put it exactly in the back end there, but anyway, it's kind of long. So you can make it shorter, but again, you sacrifice stability unless you're gonna start adding some weights in here. So maybe for most people, it's easier to add weights to the inside of the, to the stand if you're gonna use something like this for stability rather than the, uh, the depth of the design. Anyway, I just brought this out here. It's been sitting in my garage for five or six years, sitting on, hanging on the wall. So I'm just going to leave it here in the uh, Connex container to use for our matches since it should be pretty good. On the way in, in the video footage, you saw me pull over to the water station further down in the range to fill up this bucket of water. And the reason why I was doing that is because I have this new target from a company called Crossroads Precision Rifles LLC out in Texas. I saw this target that they showed on Facebook and I haven't actually tried it yet, but so I filled this bucket with water and I'm not sure it was better to fill it with um, how much water to fill into it, but it seems like halfway on a five gallon should be fine. And I can use a two and a half gallon, but basically it's this weighted target with a float and it's supposed to, when you hit it, supposed to cause it to move and I saw some video footage of it I thought this is pretty cool it's 65 bucks I don't know I I think it's uh, you can probably make this yourself if you're so inclined um, but if you have the steel to make something like this um, 
This should be AR500. I actually didn't ask if it's AR500, but I'm assuming it's suitable for um, 22. If it's not, then maybe uh, you could have made this cheaper yourself. But anyway, I decided to buy this um, for 65 bucks shipped. And uh, we'll see how it works. But it should be a pretty interesting target to shoot. And I'm not entirely sure what kind of spalling, because with a copper jacket around, when you hit a steel target, it's gonna, the, top, the copper jacket separates and whatever's around it will get shredded, uh, plastic included, definitely wood. Um, so we'll see how this affects this bucket. And uh, as far as the damage is concerned over time as you shoot this, but I'm gonna go ahead and place this out there at the 50 and then uh, we'll try shooting on it for some fun. In an effort to streamline some of my loadout for the NRL 22 matches or 22 shooting in general, I decided to try to to make sort of a, a range bag. And I utilized this Step 22 gear bag that I've had and I haven't been using. So Step 22 gear is a company out in San Diego. I met them uh, in very, somehow just coincidentally through social media. I posted something about my power tank when I went off-roading one day on, on Instagram. And my worn winch was in the in the photo is because I was, it was the front end of the Jeep. And then the winch cover that I had on there is the neoprene one that's worn branded, but it was it's made in China with a worn brand, a worn trademark on it or whatever the branding. And it was all faded. Like after two months, it was faded even with the UV protectant. It was faded purple and it was like yellowish on some sides because it, it was black. And then Step 22 Gear saw that photo because Power Tank reposted on their Instagram feed. And Step 22 Gear is all hey, um, you know, OCAP J needs to, should get one of our worn winch covers. And I was like, oh, you guys make a worn winch cover. I didn't know that because I was looking for one, right? And then I ended up getting the, the neoprene one with the worn name on it because that's the only one I could find for the Xeon. And so I was talking to the guy, um, I can't remember his name, I apologize, but I was talking to him and he's, yeah, we make them. We don't post them on the site because we just started making them and we always sell them at shows. I was like, that's cool. Um, whenever I get a chance, maybe I'll somehow get one from you guys. When you get, because I think they were they were out of stock and they're making more. And then later on, a few months later, I was in San Diego for a conference. It was a, a week long conference. And then he hit me up on Instagram, I think, and he said, "Hey, uh, I see you're in San Diego. Uh, you are you like nearby now?" I was like, "Yeah, I can. I'm kind of nearby to where he's at." And because he's just north of San Diego, I said, "Yeah, if you want, uh, you want to get one of those orange winch covers? I got some. If you want to buy one, and it's you know X dollars." And I'm like, "Yeah, I can roll by after my conference or whatever." So I rolled uh, for the day. I mean, it was in the middle of the conference. I just, did, when the day was over, I went over to his place. And so I bought one and then we were talking and uh, he was mentioning how he's starting to make bags. And this was like a year and a half ago, two years ago. And I was like, that's cool, you know what? I mean, bags, I mean, his bags look pretty good quality. And then I think I ran into him at another, sh at this show in Big Bear, there was like a, a Mercedes Sprinter van type uh, show. And I went to go check out the rigs. And then he was there, and I, I decided to get one of these bags because so I thought it was pretty cool. Plus, it's uh, this tan that matches my Jeep. So, I was, hey, you know, I'll support you because I uh, make some pretty good stuff. So, anyway, I've had this bag. Uh, kind of long story, but. And I loaded it out with <clears throat> kind of just what I might need in sort of my mags. I got these Armageddon, it's n new stuff that I got. It's Armageddon gear uh, magazine holders or a pouch. It holds three AICS mags. So, I got my Voodoo mags in here plus one sitting in one of the holster belt holster pouches i got a belt holster pouch here and then i put another new thing i got is a wee bad mini fortune cookie so i'm going to try this out um probably should have gotten a maybe i'll walk over to the conus container and grab the tank trap because i actually don't have a or i'll just use one of these things but and obviously i brought my armageddon gear bag here and then some ammo for and i don't know if i had this pelican storm case um in the garage um, it fits in here, but it's kind of a tight fit to fit all this crap in here. But all I did was put my, uh, I just put my shot timer in here because these things are so fragile. And then, um, I just shoved my Kestrel and my laser rangefinder in here. But if anything, I can just take the, I can just run it without this case, if anything. And, uh, I don't think it's a big deal, but somehow just protect the shot timer because like I said, I've broken a bunch of these things already. So, and I think it's a better fit if I just run it without the storm case because that thing takes about two thirds of the spot or space. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna use this for, for the meantime. I think it's a nice bag. It's a nice made in the USA bag. Anyway, this is a snake charmer target. 
uh, that's what they called it or nicknamed it, from Crosso Precision Rifle, set at 50 yards. We'll take a shot at it, see how it impacts. So you see the movement already? If you hit it straight on, it should go back and forth, right? But look at that wobble. That's, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Oh, wow. So there's a bunch of movement. This is a cool target. Oh, that's a miss. This is cool. All right. So, oh wow, this, what I see out of this, if you're gonna structure a stage using this target, it could be a speed run where you have, uh, you can uh, maybe see how fast you can, say, or what you could do is say the best, the best score is who can hit the 10 rounds in the fastest. And if you miss, you can add like five seconds or 10 seconds to really kill their score. Yeah. So to try to, or even have like a prize. So if you can shoot 10 rounds, 10 hits inside 20 seconds or 15 seconds, then you win or something? I don't know. This is a really cool target to mess around with. See, I missed. I'm trying, I was trying to time it on the uh, in the middle, but you have to go for the... Uh, wow, I missed that again? Okay. Okay. I really shouldn't be timing it for the middle. I should be timing it to the edge. Okay. Go for the edge there. Wow, this is a fun target. Oh man, I can imagine burning a lot of rounds shooting this all day. Oh man, that thing dipped right under my shot. Oh, that was a miss. Oh, wow, this is so good. Miss. Oh, this is so cool. Wow. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to go out there and take a quick look at it and repaint it. And then I'm going to take a look at the bucket and see if there's any, uh, any splatter from the, the rounds separating that are impacting it. But I'm, since it's not copper jacketed, there shouldn't be spall. The lead shouldn't be spraying out too much. So I think the buckets would be fine. We'll go and take a look at it anyway. And uh, yeah. Taking a look at the snake charmer target, it does look like some of the spall or the uh, bullets are ref deflecting into the float. You can see the styrofoam had already come off. I'm pretty sure it happened while shooting because I don't recall this here and plus if you got bits of star from there that means it probably came off during firing when the bullet impacted the target and kind of deflected down so you will potentially have to replace this float I don't know how how often but that's something to consider but anyway it's kind of the, kind of the premise right I have this five gallon bucket which is half full and uh, you can probably use a two and a half gallon bucket because um, I know this will fit into two and a half gallon, but the thing is, if you see the five gallon, it's a lot of leeway for this thing to move, uh, f you know, throughout the bucket. And so not only will it turn like this, it will also change the location in the bucket. So on a two and a half gallon bucket, it's probably a little bit easier, a little bit less difficult. But uh, with the five gallon, you have a lot more, a lot more motion to go for that thing to move around. So this is really cool. As far as the impact of the target see these uh, clean impacts here and there's the potential to damage the threaded stem and there's the potential to damage the nut but 22 lead you should be fine at the at the speeds we're shooting at but um, something to keep in mind 
but I'm really happy with this target and I'm not thinking there's I can feel like some imperfections here but I'm not entirely sure if yeah this might have been caused by the bullets I don't know who who knows but we'll see how long this bucket lasts um, if you keep using it for this but if anything buy another five gallon bucket but whatever this is a really cool target so we're gonna go ahead and paint it and keep shooting So this whole time I've been trying to record a clean run of shooting this snake charmer target at 50 yards and I've always missed at least one shot. I think I did record one clean run but I wasn't sure because my timer said 9 rounds not 10. Um, but everything else has been at least one shot missed and so depending on a hit the target if it decides to go side to side that will increase your amount of time that you're going to take to shoot the 10 rounds without a miss. So. It's uh, this is very challenging and it could be frustrating for some people, but I really like this. But I'm gonna try to still get a uh, clean run here. I'm gonna take my time on, on a couple runs and then try to try to speed it up. And we'll see how this how like the slow runs work. Still miss the shot. This is so so. It can be so. Ch wow, how did I miss that? It's so hard to predict this because there's. It's not just the 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 way it turns, but the axis that it turns on too. So that is what makes this so difficult. Wow, that was a 44 second run and I missed, I think, two rounds. All right, let's try again. Ah, oh, I still missed that shot. Oh, I got so close. Tenth round, I missed. Jeez, that's, that's so irritating. <laughs> so irritating. Ideally, if you can continue to hit it center direct and it's so that it doesn't go side to side, it just goes back and forth, that should be the best scenario. But any little leeway left or right, if it's not dead center, it's going to cause it to to cavitate in a lateral direction. <clears throat>
That was a clean run. Ooh, wow, it's barely a clean run. 41 seconds for a... I'm sure you could shoot it faster, but 41 seconds it took me to shoot a clean run. Spent the better part of the morning shooting that Snake Charmer target and doing a f about 30 rounds standing with this gun since uh, NRL 2 Courts of Fire for January has a standing, a little bit of standing shooting. And I've actually not shot this rifle standing, my Voodoo 22. Um, it's very front heavy. It's not very well balanced at all for three position. So uh, unlike service rifle, where I, I added weights in the back end to balance everything out, I don't have weights in the back end to balance this out. Um, probably could, but um, I don't plan on shooting the standing very much. Uh, but uh, I was pretty much trying to figure out a good standing position with this gun. And uh, I'm going to have to cant inboard like I do with service rifle. Back when I shot service rifle, I kind of cant the rifle inboard such that the sights are coming towards my face and then the grip swings out away from my body just so I get a good good straight along uh, head position because a lot of what people don't realize in standing you don't want to tilt your head one way or the other you want your neck as straight as possible you want your head straight as possible because that actually affects balance and um, I was taught this by some very uh, very very good high master high power service rifle shooters and how that tilt in your head affects the inner balance. Um, and so you'll tend to sway more often. So you got to keep your head and neck straight as possible, as erect as possible, so that you're not inducing. Because when you tilt your head, you, what you don't realize is your body is compensating for that, that cant in your head because you're not completely square to gravity. And so that will affect you in the staying position with the rifle. So uh, most guns, you can't adjust the 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 butt plate such that it can move with your shoulder um, in terms of angle um, on most you know the three position guns and small board guns they design for um, you know standing sitting and kneeling and, and prone shooting and the match rifles they use in high power those are designed to be fully adjustable and you'll see guys from stage to stage they'll have a different setting on their butt plate in their uh, hand guard and their hand stop for standing um, then sitting and prone are all going to be different. So the, you'll go and see them from stage to stage. They'll sit there with a with a hex wrench and they'll adjust all their their settings in their in their gun uh, before each stage uh, when they change positions. So um, that being said, I'm not going to be doing that because I don't have adjustable base uh, butt plate for angle. So in standing with this gun, I'll have to can inboard so that I can keep my head straight and I can get my face and eye over the scope. And over this cheek piece too so um, that's kind of the technique you have to use and uh, if you're interested more about standing um, just reach out to me in the comments and I'll I'll send you a few articles that I wrote about standing and there's a bunch of more articles written by more accomplished shooters like some of the army marksmanship unit guys um, and gals they're uh, they're uh, they they shoot high power all the time and so they know they're really really good shooters and so they have the best techniques and best tips for um, shooting. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna shoot some center X because I ran through all my uh, SK long range match ammo. I only had 200 rounds, so I'm gonna shoot some center X. I have a bunch of targets out there 75, 85, sorry, 75, 85, and 100 yards. So, and it's really cold this morning, and I think my velocities are down, so I have to take a couple more tenths of a mil to get to zero on some of these targets. Anyway, just want to burn through some rounds here and get some practice in. And yet another new thing that I mentioned I haven't mentioned is the fact that I have this um, MK machine parallax or parallax uh, ring around the parallax knob to help with the uh, grip because the parallax knob has no knurling. So sometimes in cold weather or just well, just sometimes your hand just slips over the the ring and so it's hard to turn it and so it's nice to have this extra grip on there. It's a real oversized and so I had to actually uh, shave down the points because although it, it was hitting the uh, one of the, the rear scope ring. So I had to make some, I had to shave it down. Like maybe uh, 
five tenths of a millimeter. But uh, yeah, it, it seems to work. It's just a little bit bigger than I want it to be, but it is what it is. It gives me the grips that I, grip I need. Anyway, let's shoot some 100 here real quick. You can see the trace coming off the, uh, see if the trace comes up on camera here. I can see the bullet just fly. It's, It's amazing how how slow 22 moves you can actually watch it in flight And my GoPro battery died, I think, but whatever. Don't need it. Got another battery or two more batteries. But... <sighs> Let's shoot the small target at 100 here. I think it's a two and a half inch. Two inch. I think it's, yeah, it's a two inch. I have a two inch, two and a half inch, and a three inch out there. I actually didn't shoot these targets, but I brought these with me. These are the new animal targets made by JC Steel uh, for Rimfire. Uh, I think they're 75 bucks for the set. And I think 100 or $200 or 175 to $200 if you get them with the hangers. But I already have plenty of hangers, so I just got the, uh, the animal targets. And then I think I did get one extra hanger, but uh, yeah, these are pretty cool. I didn't shoot them today, but I brought them out just in case. But... They're pretty just interesting targets for, uh, I guess, if you want to expand your, your match or your course of fire a little bit, or you just want to shoot these for fun, it's nice to have just these sort of varying sized animal targets. Kind of good for the kids, too, as far as uh, just interesting stuff to shoot at. So you got squirrel. Um, got no idea what this is supposed to be. I don't know, it's not a wolf or anything. Uh, that's a wolf or coyote. Got a pig and then um, elk or whatever deer, but you figure they make a sheep because uh, for silhouette shooting. But anyway, starting to pack up my gear to get out of here. And it's a little bit noisy on the range because the pistol match is in full swing. It's starting to dry out here a little bit. And that's one bad thing about what was going on in the rimfire range during the during the rains is that the uh, first half there's this little section between 30 25 and 50 yards is all muddy um kind of hard to walk out here and place any kind of targets to those distances but it seems like it's drying up and if we don't get any real rain between now and january 26th we should be able to set up the targets um at least uh i think the kyl is going to put over there can't remember whatever it was supposed to be at 33 yards i'm going to put on that's put on over on that side hopefully it's dried up uh, so let's take a look at the float, here, the float here, and you can see that it is definitely taking a lot of impacts here. Um, it's all styrofoam. Um, we'll see how long this lasts. I mean, I guess the front, the bottom part's all that really matters as far as the float's concerned. Um, so we'll see how long 
this last before you have to replace the float and I'll have to find out where you can get more of these things. But so far this target's been holding up well. You can see there is some lead splatter here. There's actually, uh, I don't think you can see it up close here. There's a fragment of a bullet in the bucket. So um, definitely going to tear away at the bucket um, over time. And I, one thing I saw that really happened is the fact that when you hit this straight on, the target would hit back and so this would hit the side of the bucket. So that's what's causing some of these indentations here. But this is what you'd be concerned about. But I think over time, you probably won't have too many impacts such that the, uh, the bullet jacket or the lead just fragments out on here. So shouldn't be getting any holes in this bucket anytime soon, as long as you don't hit it directly. Anyway, let's bring this in and pack up. It's right before 10 o'clock and I'm about to roll out of the range. It's just right about the time that I wanted to get out of here because I have some stuff to do today. Um, didn't really do much serious shooting. Um, I like I wanted to just shoot that target, that uh, snake charmer target made by Cross, sorry, Crossroads, is it Crossroads? Yeah, Crossroads Precision. I keep forgetting the name. Out in Texas. If you're interested in getting one of those targets, um, I'll send you guys the info. You can just pretty much reach out to the guy through email and then um, he'll make you one. And it was 65 shipped and just paid him over the phone through credit card. And it, yeah, it's a really cool target. And I think it's a, it's a great target if you watch. I mean, it's not easy at 50 yards. If you're trying to shoot it under time constraints, you're gonna, um, you're gonna probably miss. So it's a great way to practice. And like I said, if you use a five gallon bucket, it's not just moving like this on, on a single point axis, right? It's that, 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 that pivot point is actually moving as well, so that adds a lot of difficulty. If I put it into the small two and a half gallon or two gallon bucket where it doesn't, there's no room for the pivot point or the, the float to move fore and after inside the bucket, then it might be a little easier because you know the pivot point's gonna stay in one spot, whereas this, the pivot point can move, so it could be, it could be dancing around. So it, it's really fun, I mean, as far as a challenge. So, I think it's a great thing to add as far as a bonus stage. It's easy to set up. It's just a bucket with water and that target. And just set up a timer and say, hey, um, how f whoever has the best time on this wins a prize or something. And you can add like a 10 second penalty for each miss. And that should help, uh, should help uh, make for an interesting stage. So yeah, I might bring that out for the next match. Uh, so anyone shows up, I might decide to throw it out there and maybe we'll just have it on the side so that in between stages, if you've got downtime, we'll have somebody, we'll have like one or two people just kind of be the, uh, the judges, like one person, one person spotting and one person on the timer and we'll, they'll record your score. So then we'll just do that and it doesn't require extra time at the end of the match. So maybe I'll do that. I'll think about where we can set it up between the stages, so yeah. Anyway, that's kind of it for today. Today is Saturday, January 11th. Um, Probably won't be able to shoot. I won't be shooting until the 26th when we have our match. And then SHOT Show is obviously the week after this one. So I'll be at that. I tried to vlog SHOT Show. I record video, but then I don't record enough video. And it's just like, I'm too busy to record video to do a vlog. Like it's hard to take the photos, talk to people, get information, and then also vlog at the same time. So. Maybe I'll try to, I'll use the GoPro specifically and we'll see if that works, but I don't know. Don't count on a vlog for SHOT Show. I'll try it, but odds are it won't happen. But obviously I'll have my articles and reviews post SHOT Show. And I usually do a five or six part SHOT Show series of articles just on what I saw, my thoughts and opinions on various new products. So anyway, that's it for this range vlog. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Had the camera set up so you can see this. It's called a snake charmer. To wow, bird just flew on the bucket. <laughs> uh, this is a bird. Oh, great. Come on, dude. Wow, that's a nice. Okay, he's gone. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to shoot with the bird behind it.